You can explain the problem of evil in just a few sentences. The problem of evil is basically a conflict, an apparent conflict between three claims. God is wholly good, perfectly good. God is all-powerful or omnipotent. And there is evil in the world. Now, those might not seem like they conflict, but you know, intuitively, you know there's at least a tension because presumably if God is wholly good and all-powerful, then he would not create a world that has evil in it. That's the problem of evil in a nutshell. Many theistic evolutionists uh, they actually use Darwin's theory of evolution to try to solve the problem of evil. The argument basically goes this way. The traditional way of answering the problem of evil is the so-called free will defense. It basically says if God's going to create a world with agents like human beings that are free, then they have to be free to choose for or against the good. And so what that means is that even God, though he's all-powerful and perfectly good, has a trade-off to be made. If he's going to create a world of free beings, then it has to have some evil in it. Uh, theistic evolutionists often turn to the natural world itself and say, in the same way as God creates a world uh, with free human beings, he wanted to create a world in its entirety that's free. So even the physical creation that's non-sentient and non-human in some sense is free. And so the point is, if God's going to create a world like that, then he's going to, at best, he would set up a process or mechanism that would do a lot of the sort of creating on uh, his behalf. If that's the case, then there's going to be certain things that God simply can't do. He can't absolutely specify the end result um, of the things he's going to create. So they basically say, if God creates by the Darwinian mechanism, he may have done that because he wanted a creation that was free in some wider sense, not just free human beings, but the free creation. So we can attribute those evil things we see to the freedom that God has given to the created order rather than to God himself. Now the problem with this explanation is that clearly the word freedom is being used very strangely here. I mean, it makes perfect sense to talk about human beings being free. We directly experience our freedom every day, every time we choose something uh, from among alternatives. I choose strawberry ice cream over lemon ice cream, for instance. We also know what it's like to be coerced. So obviously it makes a lot of sense to talk about God creating intelligent, conscious agents as free beings. But what does it mean exactly to say that God has made a free creation? I mean, anything that he creates so that, say, physical properties uh, dictate that matter is going to do certain things, you know, under certain conditions because of the law of gravity or whatever. Those are determinate processes. There's no sense in which there's freedom acting there. Uh, and so it, it really, I think, is a stretch to try to talk about the non intelligent creation as being created free. What I think is happening is that some theistic evolutionists just simply think Darwinian evolution is established. Science has proved it and so we simply have to try to make a virtue of necessity. We have to appropriate and surrender to the neo-Darwinian story and make sense of it theologically. But I don't think there's a plausible argument that neo-Darwinism actually improves uh, the case for theism. It certainly doesn't solve the problem of evil. I think what's really going on is these are simply being surrendered and assimilated into theology. In fact, if anything, neo-Darwinism makes the problem of evil more acute rather than less acute because what the person is saying who advocates this is that God has delegated part of his creative activity, at least with respect to life, to a process which creates using mass death so that through the death of millions and millions of uh, members of a population or a species, uh, adaptive complexity will slowly increase. Now, if God's all good and all knowing, that seems like probably the last kind of process he would create to delegate his creative activity to. And so if anything, I think intuitively the Neo-Darwinian story, if it's true, makes the problem of evil more difficult to solve rather than, than uh, less difficult.